Good evening, this is UP News. I'm your host, Wade Norris. Today we're talking with former House Majority Leader, Congressman David Bonnier, who is now the campaign manager for John Edwards for President. Welcome to the show, Rep. Nice to be with you, Wade. Well, uh, right off the bat, tell us about your past experience working as the House Majority Leader uh, for the Democratic Party. Uh, well, I was the uh, House Democratic Whip, which uh, for a number of years, so actually about 11 years, and mm -hmm. then first in the majority and then in the minority. And my job in the U.S. House of Representatives was to uh, develop the, the strategy for the Democratic Party uh, to interact with the White House on mm -hmm. legislative goals and ideas, and, uh, um, and then also to count votes. And that's what WIP does. It's a job in which you're out there and you, you count votes for your party each and every day. And okay. So you know when you can take something to the floor and if you're going to be victorious or not. So we try to try to convince your colleagues that of the merits or demerits of a particular piece of legislation. Now, when did you come into uh, the, the House of Representatives? Well, I was elected to Congress in the House of Representatives back in 1976. Mm -hmm. And I served there for 26 years. And as I said, about 11 of those years, almost half, Spend leadership. So uh, during that time, uh, through Carter, Reagan, Bush Sr., Clinton, um, did you see a change in the way the, the House Democrats and Republicans uh, got along, or did it become less uh, bipartisan and more partisan? It became much more partisan as, uh, as the years went on and as you moved into the 20. Uh, first century, but the, uh, the, it peaked when uh, Cheney got into the leadership in the House of Representatives. I think Cheney was the whip of the Republican Party. Mm -hmm. And then when Newt Gingrich became the leader in his party, it really uh, became very contentious, very difficult place to work, very partisan place. Do you think it has a chance of going back in the other, other direction? Well, historically, if you look at the civility patterns in the United States Congress, that it, it ebbs, ebbs and flows. Mm -hmm. It goes up and it comes down, and I'm sure it will even out and at some point uh, along the way. Right now it's still a very contentious place, but probably a little less so than it was uh, over the last uh, seven, eight years. Now, I've uh, done a little research uh, on some of the issues that you were champion of one of the things that appeals to me personally and to a lot of voters is, was your stand against NAFTA under the Clinton administration. Mm -hmm. What was the atmosphere like as a, a Democrat going against a Democratic president on a big you know, issue like that? Well, it's that? very difficult to take on the president of your own party. Right. Uh, he had only been in office for six months. We worked closely on the budget together. We worked closely on uh, a range of other issues during that first six months. We have been relatively successful in passing significant legislation, but when he made the decision to do the North American Free Trade Agreement, NAFTA, as opposed to health care, uh, it was one of the worst decisions of his presidency and one of the worst legislative decisions made in the history of this country. Because what NAFTA gave us was, was more lost jobs, a neoconservative, a, a neoliberal, a trade policy that benefited only those people at the very, very top. The CEOs. The CEOs, mm -hmm. uh, the internationalists. I mean, this isn't even a sovereignty question. The people who lost were workers, not only in the United States, but workers in Mexico and in Canada. Uh, it was moving capital to the least common denominator where there were no protections for workers and no ability for workers to gain a substantial uh, say in their lives in terms of wages and benefits. And uh, it's, it's been with us now since, well, since 94, when we put into effect. So we've had 17 years, and we've seen a widening of the income gap, mm -hmm. uh, not only in the United States, but in Mexico and in Canada. Mm -hmm. uh, we've seen the loss of manufacturing jobs, millions and millions of jobs in this country. And we saw, I've seen the devastation of the environment because there were no environmental protections, no labor protections. Uh, it's been a race to the bottom. Mm -hmm. That's been devastating. That's why one of the reasons I went for John Edwards for president because he understands it. He 
He will fight to change the direction of our trade policies. He will fight for good jobs in this country, not exporting our jobs abroad. He will make sure that the any trade policies we do in the future will have strong labor provisions built into the core agreements and strong environmental provisions. Uh, and he cares passionately about this. And so, if you want somebody who believes in the in, in our workers in this country and they're protecting their jobs uh, and, and, and using trade in a smart way rather than in a exploitive way that basically just helps those at the top. I think John Edwards by far has the best record and position on that on that issue. Well let's let's fast forward and say hypothetically uh, John is President Edwards. How do you what would he do for I mean can you just rewrite NAFTA? Is it something that's, uh, and the other trade agreements, like the Central American Free Trade Agreement, right. these these uh, policies that are first putting our workers, our manufacturing workers out of work, now putting our farmers uh, in unfair uh, trade disposition uh, with other countries. What what can he do? I mean, can he can he go in as, could he as the president undo these trade well, agreements? He can go to the, uh, the respective countries and said he wants to nego renegotiate conditions. Now, in the North American Free Trade Agreement, you have had uh, enough people that are concerned about this in Canada and Mexico that I think the political appeal on that would be very, very good. And you've had a series of elected uh, presidents and people at the top of their governments in, in Latin America now who are very open to a, a, uh, a, a trade regime that parallels more the European Union's approach to trade, which is to lift everybody up as opposed to take everybody down to the least common denominator, the least wage, the least benefits. Um, and so, you know, I think it's the big bully pulpit, the presidency of the United States. I right. Mean, everybody wants to trade with us and we can set the parameters and John Edwards would set the parameters high and reverse these uh, policies of exploiting workers in our water, air, and land resources. Uh, and giving people some hope in the future and harmonizing upwards rather than you know taking everybody down to the least least wage.